Hey folks, Rick here. The objective of this video is to describe how the tune port injection exhaust gas recirculation or EGR system works. Here's a list of topics I'll be discussing throughout this video and hopefully it will provide for a better understanding of how the EGR system works. The basic purpose of an EGR valve is to lower oxides of nitrogen emission levels caused by the combustion process and it basically does this by decreasing engine combustion temperatures. The effects of EGR on an engine not only reduces combustion temperatures but it also reduces the risk of spark detonation. Prolonged spark detonation can cause engine damage. The first type of EGR valve is what is referred to as a negative back pressure. It has the letter N stamped after the part number and it's used in the 5.0 and the 5.7 liter tune port injection engines as per the service manual. The next type of EGR valve is referred to as a positive back pressure. It has the letter P stamped on it after the part number or it may be labeled POS on the top. The port type EGR valves are used in the 2.8 liter engines. A positive back pressure EGR valve will be used to demonstrate the design differences and how it actually works. Both of these valves are positive back pressure but are physically different in design. The vacuum ports on top are where some of the differences exist. Other differences include the neck size and the bottom portions of these two valves. Both of these EGR valves will fit the TPI intake, but because the valve on the left has its vacuum port on the top, it will interfere with the bottom of the upper plenum during installation. This is what it looks like when the positive back pressure EGR valve is broken down. And this is the assembly order of the parts. The valve has a top cover and an adjustment screw that's tamper protected from the manufacturer. Underneath that, there's a spring top cap, a diaphragm spring, and a diaphragm top frame. Here you'll see the diaphragm vent spring that applies back pressure against the exhaust vent valve to close it against the rubber diaphragm. The diaphragm bottom frame utilizes an exhaust vent port positive pressure pipe on the bottom of the diaphragm. Exhaust enters the diaphragm to put pressure on the back side of it to open the exhaust vent valve. The diaphragm has a special design that vents exhaust gases from the EGR valve. The picture on the right shows the vent valve open as a result of the pressure applied by the exhaust gases. As the exhaust vent valve opens and closes, it allows small amounts of exhaust gases to exit the EGR valve through small holes in the diaphragm frame. During engine idle operation, small amounts of exhaust gases enter the EGR diaphragm area through a small round hole that extends into the intake manifold exhaust port. The small amounts of exhaust gases that are venting through the EGR valve at idle prevent the main poppet valve from opening and at this time the gases bypass the main poppet valve and are vented through the EGR valve diaphragm. Once exhaust gases enter this chamber, pressure and exhaust heat exists. A small cap diffuses the heat to prevent damage to the diaphragm and also spreads out the pressure that's being applied to the bottom of the diaphragm. Exhaust gas pressures inside the chamber causes the spring-loaded diaphragm valve to open, allowing gases to vent out the bottom of the EGR valve. This is what the bottom of the EGR valve looked like before complete disassembly. The main poppet of the valve was removed for demonstration purposes, but here you can see the baffle, the hollow tube that facilitates the small amounts of exhaust gases entering into the diaphragm area, and the valve bottom assembly. Here is another image of the exhaust vent baffle as well as the exhaust vent holes located in the valve bottom assembly. The poppet on this EGR valve is of a little bit different design but it works the same when the ECM commands vacuum to the EGR valve to open it. Exhaust gases for EGR originate from the number 4 exhaust valve in the passenger side cylinder head. Exhaust gases then leave the number 4 cylinder and enter the intake manifold. Once the gases enter the intake, they then come up to the bottom of the exhaust side of the EGR port. Gases then travel through the valve to the vacuum side of the intake. Gases then exit the intake manifold then are ported through the passenger side upper intake runner. When the exhaust gases finally meet the intake plenum, they are then distributed to all eight cylinders through two small holes behind the throttle body. 
The EGR valve is controlled by a normally open EGR solenoid that is commanded off by the electronic control module or the ECM. When commanded open, exhaust gases flow to the intake plenum. When the ECM wants EGR, it pulses the valve on and off numerous times a second. This is referred to as the duty cycle, and it allows for precise control of the exhaust gases. The ECM calculates EGR duty cycle based on the information provided by the manifold air temperature sensor, mass airflow sensor, and the throttle position sensor. The air temperature, mass airflow, and throttle position sensors provide the ECM with data reflecting how the engine is operating. This information is essential for proper EGR solenoid operation. The ECM also requires RPM and park neutral switch input data because they affect EGR system operation. When monitoring RPM, the ECM calculates distributor reference pulse triggering of the ignition control module. This triggering starts with the pickup coil. There is no ECM to EGR input when in park or neutral. If the park neutral switch is not adjusted correctly, the EGR system will be inoperative. The ECM not only uses the park neutral switch for EGR system control, it also uses it for idle air control and vehicle speed sensor diagnostics. The ECM monitors throttle position sensor inputs. It needs this data to activate the EGR. There is no EGR at wide open throttle or below the throttle position sensor calibrated value. The ECM needs input data from the EGR diagnostic switch. It's a normally open circuit providing the EGR valve open closed status. The diagnostic switch threads into the base of the EGR valve. As exhaust gases flow from the EGR exhaust port to the vacuum side of the intake manifold, a heat transfer from the diagnostic switch occurs. This causes the switch to close that the ECM interprets as an open valve. The ECM will set a code 32 for a faulty switch, and this means the ECM detected the diagnostic switch was closed when it was supposed to be open. If the diagnostic switch is open when exhaust recirculation is commanded on by the ECM, a code 32 will be set. This means the ECM found an EGR valve closed when it was supposed to be open. The ECM also consistently monitors EGR duty cycle by evaluating specific parameters that will trigger a code 32. These parameters include excessive engine temperatures and throttle position sensor. If the parameters of these sensors are not correct, then the ECM looks for the presence of codes 21 or 22 or 33 or 34. These are TPS voltage or manifold absolute pressure sensor faults. After four minutes of these incorrect parameters, the ECM sets a code 32. This will mean that the EGR duty cycle was out of tolerance. When EGR fails, incorrect engine operation will result. Check out this list of things that can happen if there's excessive EGR. A sticking EGR valve can cause hard starting on a hot engine. Little or no EGR can cause high combustion temperatures, resulting in engine overheating and spark knock or code 43, and ultimately emission test failure. EGR system failure can also cause the oxygen sensor O2 to read a rich or lean air fuel mixture. This can cause the ECM to trigger a code 44 or a code 45. There are two main vacuum lines that operate the EGR valve system. One runs from the EGR valve to the solenoid, and the other one runs from the throttle body to the solenoid. The solenoid has a two-pronged electrical connector marked positive and negative. It's simple to do an operational check on the solenoid. It can be checked by applying voltage to it and by using a vacuum gauge. It should hold vacuum with voltage applied to it and release vacuum when voltage is removed. Lastly, the plastic port of the EGR solenoid is a fragile area. If it is jarred or the base of it becomes disconnected, a vacuum leak will result. This is the area that can become weak with age and even break off. Check out this list of topics that were discussed in this video. I hope they help you better understand how the tune port injected engine exhaust gas recirculation system works. Thanks for watching.